Hello everyone, this is Catherine. Welcome to Tech Tuesday. Today we'll be talking about online resources you can use to research local history, primarily a little bit genealogy. But uh, unfortunately, for those of you who have attended past sessions, we no longer have access to Ancestry Library Edition. So that's a little bit more limited. Some of these resources are not specifically library resources, though. So because you signed up for this class, you should already have received a link to the handout via email. It was included with the sign up email, the confirmation email you get. In any case, I will resend it along with the recording and slides, and this time it should be an attachment. I will do that manually, however, so I can't guarantee you an exact time, uh, but within the next few days to a week. You may ask questions at any time via chat or Q&A. If you would like to ask a question at the end, that's also fine. And at that time, I will be able to unmute people. What we're going to cover today is we're going to cover firstly items from South San Francisco Public Libraries collection that have been digitized as well as the library databases that we offer in which you might wish to do some research and some other resources that can be good for historical research. So starting right off with our collection, this would be the collection at the Grand Avenue Library History Room, which unfortunately is not open in person to the public. Uh, you would need to make an appointment in order to see things from there. Um, alternately, if it's something we can digitize or that we already have digitized, we may be able to send you the image or the information you request. <clears throat> Our collection is pretty much exclusively pertaining to South San Francisco history and the collections donated by certain families that have resided in South San Francisco for a long time. Uh, so in some cases, there might be a well, a prominent member of the family did work in other cities. And so the other cities come in a little bit. But again, mostly South San Francisco items. If you're looking for elsewhere in San Mateo County or elsewhere in California, there are other resources that are better. And I will be talking about some of those. So first off, we have some of our items digitized on Internet Archive. Primarily what's on there is scanned text documents. So the Enterprise Journal, the IRIS, there's also some uh, like lists of local businesses. And so there's not a ton of images in there. There are also though some oral history recordings that were made as part of a big project some years back. So you can listen to those there. Uh, they do have full text search for all of the text documents. Now the character recognition that was done is a computerized one, so an automated one. So it's not 100% accurate. So sometimes there can be oddities in the search, but it's pretty good. So the images that I have here as an example, we have uh, on the right, there's a, an advertisement from the Enterprise Journal circa 1921, and to the left and the bottom are excerpts from the 1917 IRIS, which was a publication of South San Francisco High School. There are also a lot of other institutions that have co contributed things to Internet Archive. Um, so throughout California, throughout the world, it can be worth if you have a particular city you're interested in seeing if their local library or historical society hasn't donated something. Um, there's also a lot of websites cataloged in their Wayback Machine. So really for historical research, Internet Archive is fantastic overall. The second one is bits of history. And again, although these are part of our 
library's collection that have been digitized, they don't require you to log in to see this. This is all just on the internet. So Bits of History is a project that was done jointly between South San Francisco Public Library, Redwood City Public Library, and San Mateo County Historical Society. This was done some years back. So some of the pictures are not very high resolution, but if you should happen to need a higher resolution version, in many cases, one of those three institutions will have one on hand already digitized, although usage restrictions may apply, like you might not be able to publish it for commercial usage, for example, or you might need to negotiate specific terms for that because our default form is for non commercial use. So the example photos I have here are there's one of an aerial photo of Bethlehem Steel Company in 1965 and of course the surrounding area which this is all you know the east of 101 sort of industrial area uh top right we have the Bank of South San Francisco circa early 1900s I believe this is a postcard that has been colorized and in the bottom right is a photo of Spruce Theater which was a drive-in circa 1968. Again, please feel free to stop me at any time if you have questions about these resources. And I will show them a little bit later as well. So then we have Calisphere. Now Calisphere is a project I believe headed up by the University of California system. Uh, and so it's a bunch of different institutions throughout California that have sent in digitized images and text and so forth that you can go through. So if you are interested in California history more broadly, there is a lot on there. But we have some items on there, and so does the South San Francisco Historical Society that you can go through. And so some of it's more or less duplicate of what's on Internet Archive, but there's also a few images that aren't on Internet Archive. And you can see some of those to the right here. So we have a photo of the dedication of DNA Way, which was in July of 1997, the Coffinberry children in front of the family Christmas tree in 1919, and lastly in the bottom right is a Martin School class photo circa 1940. And you may or may not be able to make it out, but it has the uh, legend 1940, and one of the children in the photo is indicated as Johnny. Okay, so the next section is library databases. So these are the ones where you will need to log in. You would need your library card and your PIN number, which your PIN number is usually the last four digits of your phone number. And I will, as I go through, tell you which of these are for the whole Peninsula Library System and which of them are South San Francisco only or limited to certain cities. The first one is Explora, and I put this first because it is available to everybody. And this is just a catch all database. It's got most of the research databases that we have at Peninsula Library System all together in it, so you can search them at once. As such, it covers a great many topics. It has material at all sorts of reading levels. I mean, some of it's exerted from um, encyclopedias de designed for children, so it's at a elementary school reading level. Uh, and there's some that's from, you know, professional or academic journals. But you can limit the search and you'll you might be able to make out it's a little bit blurry in this screenshot but at the top there's a search bar with a advanced search option if you go in there you can limit it to certain databases or certain publications and they do have a lot of topic guides which you can see towards the bottom of this screenshot so for example um, if you're interested in art if you're interested in history and social science it has those options for you and again, this is available to all Peninsula Library System members, regardless of what city your card is affiliated with, and you can use it in library or at home. Another one we have is Archives Unbound, and I believe this one is South San Francisco only, but if you visit our branches in person, you will be able to access it from our computers or our internet 
without a login because it detects automatically. Uh, this is f focused on historical primary sources. Um, so it'll have publications from you know, various, for instance, activist organizations and things like that. And you can see what people were talking about at the time. Uh, it may not be as useful to specifically South San Francisco, um, especially if you're trying to look at a narrow topic within South San Francisco, there's not that much local resources here. But if you want to get a broader sense of what the you know, what was people's opinion on a certain subject at that point in time, it can be useful for that sort of thing. And they also have these topic guides that you can see on the screenshot on the right. And the final online library resource that I'm going to talk about today is Newsbank. Now, this is a website that lets you read newspaper articles online um from throughout the u.s if you have the south san francisco access or the county access is local newspapers only and these go back to it depends on the publication but some of them go back as far as 1985. unfortunately not any farther than that most of them are unfortunately text only so you won't see those images even if the original text had a lot of images in it. Um, you can search or browse by topic or by source. And if you go to, to our branches or San Mateo County's branches, so that's um, San Mateo County would be San Carlos, Belmont, um, Pacifica, Half Moon Bay, et cetera. Um, if you go to our branches or South San Francisco, sorry, San Mateo County's branches, then you can access from our computers or from our Wi-Fi without having to log in. And both Newsbank and Explora have the nice feature of enabling you to email articles to yourself. Um, and they include the full text of the article in the email, so you don't have to like click through and log in again, which is extremely handy if you maybe don't have access at home. Any questions before I move on to the broader resources from the internet? And this is not comprehensive, by the way. No, okay, well, thank you. Uh, if you think of one later, feel free to hit me with that. I wanted to start with the California State Library because we are talking local history and they have these great research guides to researching local history on a county by county and in some cases a city by city basis. So the larger cities, for example, San Francisco will have a guide. Um, but the smaller ones probably not. And part of that is just, uh, you know, do you have, are there specific resources focused on that city or are most of the resources that will have information on your city part of a county item, right? So for San Mateo County, a lot of the counties will be in, you know, San, San Mateo County Historical Society, et cetera. They also have guides by topic, for instance, if you're interested in African American history within California or African American genealogy, there are specific resources there that you might want to research. Um, the, the California State Library also has quite a number of its holdings, although nowhere near the totality of them digitized so you can consult them online like this photo, for example, which shows earthquake refugee cottages in 1907. Uh, I wanted to also include a note on obtaining vital records within California. Now, such information might be in online sources such as Ancestry or other genealogical websites, 
but if you want a paper copy you can get informational copies even for people who you otherwise wouldn't have the right to, like you wouldn't be able to get the copy that's uh, used for identification you'll get a copy that says uh, not for identification and it might have certain information blocked out but it'll have the dates and so forth so this includes birth death and marriage certificates and it's often quickest if you know the county to go to that county or you know to contact them even if you don't go in person and especially right now they may or may not have face-to-face -face services in some counties right but um you know if you know it was los angeles county in los angeles county your grandparents got married that sort of thing then you can contact los angeles county to get a contact of their marriage certificate however if you don't happen to know the county, the California Department of Public Health keeps copies of some of these records. And so you can contact them and there is a fee associated with this. Another resource is the Library of Congress, which has a selection of their holdings digitized. Uh, it's honestly, it's quite a small selection. This, I mean, they have, everything that was published over a certain publication run in the US. Um, they have, and a great many other resources besides, some of which are unique to them. Uh, but for what was digitized, you can search it online. And even for a you know, place like South San Francisco, there is some. So I was able to find this map that you see on the right, which is a fire insurance map, actually. And so it's not very legible on the slide, but it has some information about the status of the fire department at that time in 1910. And you can do a text search or you can browse by category. Um, but again, with all these broader resources, it's not always, there will be some, but it can be a little bit of a slog to try to find anything super local. Another one is National Archives. Now these, these guys are the keepers of the census and military records and historic place registers and so on and so forth. They keep records that were created by the federal government. This is the um, sort of nuance that's not necessarily, people aren't necessarily aware of outside of the archives field, but there's a type of archive that's you know, the archive of the records created by X organization. And so that's what they are, right? And so they keep records that were created by other governmental departments as well. And in the case of the census specifically, I forgot to verify this, but I believe that they transfer the full census records from the Census Bureau to the National Archives 72 years after the census takes place, which has the impact that the 1950 census should become available to the public next year. Because when it's transferred from the Census Department to the National Archives, you can access the full details, not just the anonymized statistics, um, which, you know, in some cases, if you've ever been through census statistics, you get this notice that, oh, well, we didn't include certain information because it would be too easy to identify, right? Like if there are five people who speak a certain language in a certain town, well, they're not going to include how many people there are or in what district of the town they're in, because it would be too easy for someone who lives there to go, oh, that's the so-and-sos, right? versus if it's, you know, 20% of the population speaks a certain language, then in that case, they can include it. And that would be more the American Community Survey, not the census, but in any case. Um, so you can download actually a whole chunk of the census or the entire census from the National Archives, which is great if you want to get an overview of the city or town and then go through page by page of, you know, on such and so street, there was Mr. Smith who was a barber and he lived with his wife and two children and so on and so forth. All that kind of detail that you would also be able to find on these more genealogical uh, websites. 
Now they do have, um, so they do have an option to research in person, although I'm not sure that might be kind of limited right now. And it is possible to contact them with a specific question. Like they'll have questions to the effect of, um, you know, my grandfather won such and so medal in World War II. Can you give me more detail about, you know, what he did to earn the medal? And they don't always have a full answer to that, but in some cases, they'll just point you to a resource that will give you more specific information on that. So as a few general search tips, I recommend putting quotation marks around the exact phrase you're searching for. An example that came up a lot for me was if you put South San Francisco in quotation marks, it cuts down on the results that are like such and so in the southern part of San Francisco or south of whatever street in San Francisco. Because a lot of, you know, a lot of these databases, they'll have thousands of resources for San Francisco and not much for South San Francisco, right? So if you're looking for a place, you know, that has a similarly named town and it goes for things like Menlo Park as well. There's another Menlo Park, et cetera. You can also use, there may be an operator to exclude unwanted terms. This is commonly known as the not operator. Um, I give Pinterest as an example, because if you're looking for the source of an image, oftentimes people, if it's a popular image, people will have pinned it a bunch of times on Pinterest, and that creates a bunch of results in your search engine, right? And so you want to eliminate those. Another thing you can do is you can specify that a certain word absolutely must be included. And oftentimes this is with the word AND in all caps. And many of these resources also give the option to narrow results by date, by location, or by the type of document. For example, I want maps, or I want newspapers, or magazines, etc. All right, thank you for coming. I will go on to a demonstration, but I'm curious to know if anyone has any questions first. Or comments. All right, we have a raised hand. Please. Go ahead, Victoria, you will have to unmute yourself. So I'm interested in looking for a particular building mm -hmm. uh, in South City. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it is a historic building, but um, I don't know anything. You know, it, it's, it's my mother owns a building mm -hmm. on Grand Avenue in South San Francisco. Okay. And we'd like to kind of look at the history of that building. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest? Okay, a uh, couple things come to mind. One is if it is in the register of uh, historic sites, which, you know, even if it's quite old, it may not be. But if it is, then there will be a write up on it in that register. And so that would be on the National Archives. Um, another thing is that something like the, if it dates back to say the 1910s, 1920s, there might be something in the enterprise journal. So you'd be able to search those on internet archive. Aside from that, it's possible we might have something in the history room. So let me put in the chat, the email address for the history room. Uh, so that you can email us with uh, the address of the location and whatever you do know. Um, and we can see if we have anything, which, you know, if we, let's say if we have anything from the architect or something, it's possible. So that's our email address there, ssfpladm at plsinfo.org. It can take us a few days to get back to you with history, uh, history questions because we don't have staff in the history room full time. 
And uh, yes, these slides will be available to the person who sent in that question. Okay. And I'm going to move on to the demonstration, but feel free to continue sending in any questions that you may have. Okay, so I'm going to start with our library website. Uh, the easy way to get here is ssf.net slash library. And once you're here, most of our resources are linked from this online library page. We are reworking this a little bit, but it should just result in things being more concentrated on the online library page. So it should be simpler to find things rather than more complicated. Um, so yes, look forward to that. And most of the items I'll be looking at here would be either in the history section or the general research section. Although we also have some in newspapers. And so you can click on these and they will expand. Now, um, Internet Archive, I will show you right off because it won't require us to log in. So when I click on that, it opens up specifically our collection on Internet Archive. And you can sort of see the types of things. A lot of it is this enterprise journal. I would recommend when searching to switch the search from metadata to text contents, because metadata, that'll be the title, the date, the number of pages, probably the format, maybe a few comments about the content, but it's not going to be as useful if, say, you're looking for an article about the 1906 earthquake, let's say, or you're looking for or about um, the mayor in a certain year, right? So you'll want to put your search in the text contents section. You can also search by the title, the date published, the creator, or you can go on the right side and narrow it to different years and subjects. If you click on this more, you will see that we tend to have a lot in the 1910s and 1920s and earlier. I think this is just an issue of uh, copyright in that things published before a certain date are in the US are definitely out of copyright. And therefore, we know we have the right to publish them post uh, publicly on the internet. Now, well, let's just click through into one of these newspapers. This is the Enterprise circa 1896. For those who aren't familiar, this was a South San Francisco paper, but you will, you will zoom in and you will notice that this is old enough that they were calling the place Baden. That gives you an idea. And we can page through to the different pages and zoom out again with the things on the bottom. There is a headphones icon if you find it useful to have the newspaper read aloud to you, that is an option. Again, the text recognition can be a little bit sketchy at times, but uh, it's there. And that's going to be a, you know, a robotic voice. You can go into full screen like so and exit it, and you can download some or all of it in all of these various formats. But oftentimes, honestly, if I just want a small section, I will just take a screenshot and then use that. I'm going to back out of this so that we can do a search. Um, Let's say so we're soon celebrating the 101 years of City Hall uh, next Saturday, actually, on uh, Grand Avenue. So I'm just going to search for City Hall in the text contents. And of course, quite a bit comes up because the City Hall was a happening place, obviously. Um, and you can see there's also the city directories and things like that that come up. But we know that City Hall was built in 1920, so let me narrow it to 1920. 
and something shows up pretty much every week because that's when uh that's when they were building it if i click through on this one it should be close to the date that they uh a few weeks after they commemorated it because i believe it was on veterans day and you can see there's these it's probably not very visible on your end but there are these little blue lines that show you where in the document your search showed up but also on the side there's all of these things as well and we can click through to it and it doesn't do anything because we're still on the first page and it explains that they held the first meeting of the chamber of commerce at city hall things like that and one of the most fascinating things for me about these is that you do get these little asides about what the people were doing right you know mrs so-and-so welcomed her cousin who is visiting from new york all of these things that are kind of day-to-day -day stuff they probably wouldn't make the paper nowadays. So I think you probably get the idea with uh, Internet Archive, or at least with our collection on there. But again, there are a lot of other things on Internet Archive, so you can explore that as well. Now, we don't have bits of history linked as obviously from here so i'm just going to go back into my powerpoint and use that link but it's on the there's like a city history page it's on there so here's bits of history and it is a bit of an older website which kind of shows but it's searchable and it has these otherwise it relies on these alphabetical lists of titles or of subjects which can get a little bit tiresome, but let's see, what can we search for? For example, um, yeah, we could search for South San Francisco, but um, let's see, steel, if we're interested in the various steel companies. There we go, those aerial views of Bethlehem Steel. And you can see there's an image and there'll be a bit of a larger version, but still not extremely high resolution. And some of these actually, not this one in particular, but some of these are actually posted in nicer printed versions around city buildings in South San Francisco. So you might recognize a few here and there. So there's some of the, the main library, for example. <clears throat> and let me just go into one of these items. Here we go. And you can see that for each of the items, it has some descriptors and a date and also the owning library, which I'll just highlight. So this is who you would want to contact if you need a larger version of the photo or more information about the photo, which we might have. And we also do not link prominently to Calisphere, but I will show you that briefly. This is Calisphere. Um, and the California Revealed, it has a few panoramas, but other than that, it's mostly these text items and uh, oral histories, similar to what you would see on Internet Archive. But you can click into the Industrial City Local History, and it does have a lot more about the industry and biotech and all that. Some of it's quite recent, actually. You know, photo from 2008, poster from 2006. But there are some older items as well. Uh, this is from the 1960s doesn't give me a more specific date. No, it's not. Let 
Again, those are located, I believe, if you go on the city website, there is a, yes, our city, and there's a history section, and they should be linked from there, I believe. Okay, so there's a comment, the various historical photos around town were not identified as to where they were taken. It would be great if they could be identified on each piece. I'm not sure what you're referring to because when I was looking at bits of history, it does have these descriptions, you know, industry, Bethlehem, Steel Co, exterior view, et cetera. And then these ones as well, when you click them, I mean, it doesn't have, a, When you click them, it does have some information through there. Oh yeah, oh, you're talking about the ones in the library. Yeah, no, we do not have legends up and that might actually be good to do. There's a certain, there's a point to that. I doubt we would do it at this point though because the main library is going to be no longer used as a library uh, after the new building opens probably next year, we hope. I don't know if you've been on El Camino and, um, was the cross street chestnut recently but there's actually the beginnings of a structure there and the police department is looking pretty close to completed so that's going to have entirely new decorations uh i you know i can't guarantee that there won't be historical photos but i don't know that there will be either yeah so i doubt we'd go back and give them all legends now but if you have questions about any of the photos in our main library, we can uh, try to answer them. I know, for example, the baseball players, I found that one. And that's going to be in a slideshow that I made for the City Hall History Day. Yeah, no problem. And many of those are, are on bits of history, but of course, looking for them on your own without a whole lot of context on Oh, there's a photo of a woman sitting on a car, right? You know, what? who is she? Where was this photo taken? That would be a bit of a struggle, I think. Um, oh, yes, library databases. I would like to cover those quickly. Well, maybe not too quickly. I think we have time. So I'm just going to start with Explora because I did have it first. It's linked here in the general research section. Um, and it does contain these academic search complete American history and life education resource information center all of those are part of Explora. in any case now we're logged in and you'll be able to log into this with any peninsula library system card and you can see they haven't changed the home page that much recently so for those of us who are interested in history we can hit more on this history and social science section and they'll have all sorts of topics in here. Alternatively, we could try researching in quotation marks, South San Francisco, and see if anything comes up that isn't just the South part of San Francisco. And there you go, biogas to fuel fleet in South San Francisco. Now these are kind of, false results because they're from San Francisco, but they do have videos on Explora. I don't typically use them very much, but they exist. And when you click through, I'll just click through to something random here. Actually, no, let me narrow the date. So here we have results and it says they're from 1980 to 2021, say this year. If I narrow it in date using that date slider, it'll give you some results that are a little bit more specific to that timeline. So yes, it looks like there's a couple from Library Journal and some of the others are from biotech things. So let's click on this speaking of people. just so I can show you what it looks like, because a lot of these do have images in them. Yeah, there we go. And so this is why it came up, because she is working for, or was at least working for Kaiser in South San Francisco. She was the administrator, actually.
And let's say that I liked this article, it was pertinent to my research and I want to save it. Well, I can print it out using this print button or I can email it using the email button on the right side. So I hit the email button and then it asks me to put where I want it emailed to, what I want the subject to be and any comments I want to add. And I can have it sent in plain text format, but if I don't, then it'll just give me a PDF if there is a PDF available. Some of the results in Explorer are text only. Um, and you can get a brief, for the site. you can get a citation, an abstract, and it'll let you pick the citation format, which is great if any of you are you know, doing this for a, uh, for a class or anything like that. Or for publication. And then I can, when I'm done here, I can also just download the PDF directly if I'm on a computer that I can continue using after this. But if I was say accessing this from a library computer, then emailing it would be much more useful. And I'll go back to the results list. and just show you the advanced search really fast. So this is the advanced search. You will notice that it is in fact quite advanced. Um, and part of the issue being that it has specific limiters for some of the databases that are included within it. Um, so if you're looking for biographical information for a well-known person, then you could use the limiters for Biography Reference Center, for example. You know, or we have Business Source Complete, or we have Newspaper Source Plus, et cetera, et cetera. With that said, the top section here is the more general search items, as well as this section right here. So you can put multiple search terms. You can have them search specific fields if you want. And they have this and, or, or not. So, or would mean if it includes at least one of the terms. So if I put South San Francisco and, and I put, um, or San Mateo County, that would have to include one of those, but it's okay if it doesn't include both. But if it does include both, it'll also come up with that result. And then if I wanted to put not, I could put something that I want absolutely excluded. You know, was, which is something that I tend to do as a refinement for a search I've already started. So say I do a search, and I find out that certain topics that are not pertinent to my query are coming up a lot. That's when I would start adding that not just to exclude them. Like I, I was helping someone with a question relating to international relations and there was some topic that was something of a hot button issue that was coming up in a lot of the results about the country he was looking for but it wasn't pertinent to what he wanted to talk about in his paper right so that sort of thing um and you can also limit it by lexile reading level i wouldn't super recommend this unless you're doing this research uh, for or with a child or with someone who's um, struggling to read some of the more complex texts, but it's there. And you can limit by number of pages or by you just want scholarly journals as well. Uh, incidentally, we do have um, we do have consumer reports in here, which is not super useful to history research. But for those who want consumer reports, putting consumer reports in the publication box is very nice. And I will move along to the next one, but feel free to hit me up with any questions. Okay, so let's talk about NewsBank a little bit. And NewsBank, I believe, just asks for your library card number, not for your PIN. I had it go to the San Francisco community coverage page, but in a second, I'll show you the main landing page as well. And so for each paper that they have, it shows you the dates, the location, and the uh, title. 
and whether it's a whether it's just text or if it's got other things as well and the only one we have the image for again is the chronicle and only for the last looks like five years four years yeah four years <clears throat> But you'll see there are a lot of newspapers in here that you can go through specifically. And if you were to click one that we have, say the Chronicle, it does take a moment to open generally, but it has it by date. And you can navigate back in time to previous years as well. If you just wanted to see what was the big headline on March 1st, 2015. Well, not in this one, but it only goes back to 2017 in the image edition, but say 2017. And you can click it and it'll open up the actual paper for the ones that are image like this, which for us, just the Chronicle. So I'll just show you that really quickly. So the ones that are the image style, you have to go through it section by section. You can see that it's got all the pages on the right in the page thumbnail section. You can also do this drop down. It'll let you pick a page directly, or you can go to previous and next page. It also has this email functionality, so you can send it to yourself or to your friend. Um, you can clip it which you would then be able to download and print. So you would um, select clip. Yeah, it gives you the selection box and you can pick it up. I will hit cancel on that. And it lets you export citations in a variety of formats and for a variety of programs, if you have any citation manager programs, which I imagine most people do not. You can also copy the link to it, but you would still have to have access to NewsBank to actually read it. So I'm going to go to the NewsBank landing page and show you how they have all of these suggested topics. You know, so if you want articles from all the publications we have about that specific subject, so let's say education, and then they have uh, campus safety, for example. And they will periodically update these with, with um, subjects that are more topical. For example, when COVID started to be big in the news in March of 2020, they did add a COVID-19 subject. And you can limit it by date. And so you can see we do have those 1980s items. So if you want to see what people were concerned with about your topic in the 1980s, here it is. Now there aren't as many publications that go back that far that we have, but there are a few. And so when you click through, these will just be the articles and for the newspapers that we have in text format, it'll have it as a list of articles rather than a list of pages. Anyway, it opens up an article like so, and you have the same options to print it or email it, cite it, copy it, et cetera, et cetera. There is this read news document option and you won't be able to hear it if I click it, so I won't bother, but it'll read off the news article in a sort of robotic voice for you. So if you do need that type of accessibility feature, it's there. They also have, there we go, on the right side, they have these on the main page here, they have these special reports and hot topics ones. So you can click through to that and it should give me, yes, a variety of current events. And what it does, what these actually are is just a pre-made advanced search. So let's see, supply chain and shipping industry. So it has to have both terms. And then you could limit it to more options. 
one of this here. I'm not sure how we have some. Um, oh, I guess it's just displaying this decade as until 2029. Now, some publications, if you do start getting into current events, some of the publications are only available like a couple of days after it's actually published. Notably, the San Jose Mercury News tends to have a couple of days of delay in my experience. Um, so it's, I think the Chronicle is pretty much on top of it though. So it can be good to check back a couple of days later if there was that article you absolutely wanted to read in the Mercury News and it wasn't there the day the paper came out. So for historical research, we would, let's say, do, let's see, I can do more search options. And I can say, um, I want to do, let's see, uh, 1985 to 1986, since I know that's about the earliest that it has. And I have South San, I'm not gonna bother capitalizing it. So San Francisco and just an all text. And then if I search, let's see what it comes up with. And it comes up with some things. And so it has this uh, Genentech item, for example. All right. And I think that's about as much time as I can afford to spend on that. So I'll show you the last of the library resources, which is this Archives Unbound. And again, that's in the history section on our online library page. So to log into this, again, we need to enter our online library password. Let's see if I can find mine, there it is. Right. And we're in. And it has all of these, let's say never, has all of these collections. So you can explore specific topics or you can do an advanced search. And again, I'll just show you that there's not really that much for us. So San Francisco. It'll look like there's a bunch, but then you sort of see it and oh, it's from San Francisco to Portland. But there's all sorts of stuff. So this is from the Archives of the Federal Writers Project. For example, uh, the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Library. There's all sorts of things. They have newspapers as well. So something to explore if you're interested in that. All right, I'm going to stop recording. Thank you for coming, but I will stick around for a few minutes in case anyone has any further questions.